Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. And we are pleased to be back, and here is the news. China exchanges congratulations with the Sultan of Brunei on the 30th anniversary of diplomatic relations. Chinese President Xi Jinping exchanges congratulatory messages with Brunei Sultan Haji Hassan Bolkiah on the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between the two countries. In his message, she says that in the past 30 years, since China and Brunei established diplomatic ties, bilateral relations have maintained sound and fast development. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the two countries have always supported and helped each other in times of difficulties, writing a new chapter of friendship, adding that he attaches great importance to the development of China-Brunei relations. She stresses that he is willing to work with His Majesty Sultan Hassan Al and take the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties as an opportunity to enhance strategic communication and deepen cooperation on fighting COVID-19. Hassan Al says in his message that China is an important cooperation partner of Brunei and bilateral cooperation has achieved positive progress. He says Brunei thanked the Chinese side for its support and assistance to Brunei in response to the COVID-19 epidemic and expresses readiness to deepen the strategic cooperation partnership with China to create more benefits to the two countries and their people. Queen Elizabeth of United Kingdom attends the centenary of charity for armed services. Queen Elizabeth attended a Thanksgiving service to mark the centenary of the Royal British Legion Charity in London. The 95-year-old monarch was joined by her daughter, Princess Anne, at Westminster Abbey in central London and was seen using a walking stick. The service highlighted the work of a charity which supports members and veterans of the armed forces. The Royal British Legion is most widely known as the organizers of nationwide poppy appeal, which encourages small donations in exchange for a red pepper flower that represents the country's war dead. Indonesia will reopen Bali Island to foreign tourists from middle of October. A senior cabinet minister, Luhut Panjaitan, says Indonesia will reopen its tourist island Bali for some international travelers, including those from China, New Zealand, and Japan, among others, from October 14. Luhut adds that Bali's Ngurarai International Airport will be open to foreign tourists from that date, with visitors required to quarantine for eight days at their own expenses. Indonesia is among the countries worst hit by COVID-19 in Asia, officially recording more than 40 million cases and 142,000 deaths, although public health experts believe the true toll is far higher. However, daily cases have plummeted from more than 56,000 at the peak of the second wave in mid-July this year to 1,100 cases on 3rd of October. The government has also signaled its willingness to reopen the island to international tourists to help revive Bali's battered economy. Indonesia's Southeast Asia's biggest economy exited its first recession in over two decades in the second quarter, though a COVID-19 resurgence and ensuing social restrictions likely weighed on the recovery momentum. Philippine President Duterte announces he's retiring from politics. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte says he was retiring from politics, a surprise move that fueled speculation he was clearing the way for his daughter to run to succeed him. I am expected to give a short talk. But first of all, I'd like to wish Senator Bongo, all the best and good luck in his quest for the vice presidency. Now I'd like to address myself to the entire nation. The universal sentiment of the Filipino, as reflected in the different surveys and in any 
in many forums and uh, well, caucuses and meetings to discuss what I should do in my life. The overwhelming, I said, uh, sentiment of the Filipino is that I am not qualified and it would be a violation of the Constitution to circumvent the law, the spirit of the Constitution. And so, in obedience to the will of the people who after all placed me in the presidency many years ago, I now say sa mga kababayan ko, sundin ko ang gusto ninyo. And today, I announce my retirement from politics. Salamat po sa inyong lahat. Duterte had been expected to run for vice president. He is not eligible to run again for a top job as the constitution sets a single six-year term limit for the president. Political observers had long suspected Duterte could spring a surprise, such as a presidential run by his daughter, Sara Duterte Carpio, next year. Duterte Carpio, who replaced her father as mayor of Davao last month, said she was not running for higher office next year because she and her father had agreed only one of them would run for national office in 2022. The older Duterte's decision not to join the race next year would clear her way. Candidates have registered, but withdrawals and substitutions are allowed until November 15, leaving scope for last-minute changes of heart, like the 11th-hour entry of Duterte for the 2016 election, which he won by a huge margin. The priest of Filipino places animal on World Animal Day and the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Filipino animal lovers take pets blessed in a drive through pet blessing ceremony ahead of World Animal Day and the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. A Catholic priest prays and sprinkled holy water as he blessed a variety of cats and dogs, while pet owners and their fury animals lined up inside the safety of their cars during the ceremony in East Wood Mall in the Philippines capital. Organizer says the annual event was conducted in a drive through setting to avoid crowds and ensure social distancing amid the pandemic. I want them to be safe and healthy. They are also our family and they should be blessed as well. Family sila kaya dapat blessed din sila. World Animal Day, celebrated on 4 of October every year, a day that Catholics celebrate the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of animals. Thai Red Cross begins vaccination for migrant workers and undocumented refugees. The Red Cross said it is aiming to fully vaccinate 5,000 people in the upcoming weeks after receiving 100,000 Sinopharm doses donated from the Red Cross Society of China. The problem we face is that we don't know the exact number of migrant workers living in Thailand, adding that vaccinating as many as migrant workers as possible will benefit the Thai people as well. The site is one of four vaccination stations that will be open in Bangkok until the end of the month. Tech said the hope that was to secure even more vaccine doses, relying on a network of humanitarian organizations such as the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies and Migrant Working Group. Official government data shows about 2.35 million migrants have permits to work in Thailand, but the International Organization for Migration estimates there are closer to 4 million to 5 million migrant workers. Many live in cramped quarters in industries, including construction, manufacturing and seafood industries. Their lack of access to health care has made getting vaccination as a challenge. For Pesan, 35, a Burmese man who has lived in Thailand for more than 20 years, getting the first dose came as a relief. I feel as safe as we can be now. We came as a group because we fear death. It's such a relief to be here. Finally, there's someone who's lending us help.
Lishing Lung says it could take up to six months for Singapore to enter new normal. Singapore may need as much as six months to get to a new normal in terms of easing restrictions and people resuming their previous routines in the COVID-19 pandemic. It will take us at least three months and perhaps as long as six months to get to this new normal. It will take us at least three months and perhaps as long as six months to get there. But get there, we will. Lee stated in an address to the island nation, which has largely kept the virus at bay since last year with masks, contact tracing and a closed border. The Southeast Asia city-state, with a population of 5.45 million, has been reporting more than 3,000 daily COVID-19 infections over the past few days, though almost of them are symptomatic or mild. About 80% of the population is fully vaccinated. To protect our healthcare system and healthcare workers. After the surge stabilizes, we may still see future surges, especially if new variants emerge. We may have to tap on the brakes again if cases again grow too fast to protect our healthcare system and healthcare workers. Our immunity levels will increase. Singapore recently reimposed coronavirus restrictions to buy time to prepare to live with the disease. The step has been met with some rare frustration of the government, walks as fine line between reopening and preventing hospitals from getting overwhelmed. In a news conference, the government says it will expand quarantine-free entry to vaccinated travelers for more countries while tightening restrictions for unvaccinated people. China and Chile will implement an authorized economic operator. Under the agreement, companies that obtain the authorized economic operator status in the two countries will enjoy simplified costumes procedures, such as reduced examination and prioritized clearance, which will significantly shorten customs clearance time and reduce costs at ports as well as for insurance and logistic. An agreement on mutual authorized economic operator status, signed between China and Chile, went into effect on Friday, offering easier customs clearance for exporters from both countries. This is China's first authorized economic operator mutual recognition officially implemented in South America, according to the General Administration of Customs. Chile is China's second largest trade partner in South America. The trade volume between the two countries totaled 42.19 billion US dollar in the first eight months of the year, up 50.1% year on year, as the General Administration of Customs data showed. During the period, a total of 883 Chinese companies with authorized economic operator status exported to Chile, with the combined export value accounting for about 18.9% of the Chinese total exports to Chile. The authorized economic operator system, initiated by the World Customs Organization, is aimed at facilitating customs clearance for enterprises with outstanding records in terms of legal compliance, credit rating, and safety. By the end of August, China has signed authorized economic operator agreements with 46 countries and regions, including Singapore, the Republic of Korea, and European Union member states. The country will further promote authorized economic operator mutual recognition cooperation with countries including Russia, Turkey, Argentina, and Mexico, according to the General Administration of Customs. Wang Yi calls on CICA members to guard against regional security risks. State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi called on the member state of the Conference on Interaction on Confidence Building Measures in Asia, CICA, to make concerted efforts to guard against regional security risks. Wong said the CICA members should work together to safeguard regional security and stability while attending the sixth foreign ministers' meeting of the CICA in video link in Beijing. He said security risks in Asia have become more prominent with new changes in hot issues and new trends in terrorism, so all parties should take effective measures to guard against them. Although the war in Afghanistan is over, its after effects left behind by the United States and Western military intervention and national transformation still linger. The future of Afghanistan should move towards the direction of being open and inclusive, steadfast against terrorism and friendly with its neighbors. Countries in the region and the international community should work with Afghanistan in the same direction and create favorable conditions for its reconstruction and development. China is one of its neighbors, will work with all relevant parties 
to push for a peaceful transition for Afghanistan. Wong said the Trilateral Security Pact, AUKUS, formed by the United States, the United Kingdom and Australia in September, will create a nuclear proliferation risk and damage regional prosperity and stability. Wong also called on all parties to strengthen cooperation in the fight against COVID-19 in a scientific way and continue to work against the politicizing the pandemic and labeling the virus. The CIC was established in 1992 as an intergovernmental forum for dialogue and consultation on security issues in Asia among its 27 member countries are China, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Russia and Thailand. It also includes other countries and international organizations as observers. Squid Game, which airs on Netflix, will make children play and follow the same. Are you ready? The series from South Korea has gone viral across the world and online by morphing childhood games popular before the digital era, such as Red Light, Green Light, into deadly survival challenges. Children in Singapore were seen playing Red Light, Green Light, a game feature on Netflix global hit, Squid Game. In a video filmed in the housing state in North Singapore, children were seen running and stopping as they heard another child commands. The playground game where players stop and go at Tiger's command is one of the six kids' games with the fatal consequences depicted in the gory thriller named after the South Korean variation of tag plate in the 1970s and 80s using a board drawn in the dirt. In the red light green light episode, it shows first players are shot for failing to stand still at the red light call. That's a wrap up. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a great and nice weekend. See you soon.